My hope this morning for you, for all of us, is that those beautiful words of Rumi's, thank you, Ben, so much for bringing them to life. My hope is that you were able to welcome them in, in some small way, for they are indeed blessing words for each and every one of us. They're invitation words to know ourselves as rubies embedded in granite. Let us stop pretending, stop insisting this to not be true. And I would add, for this is my struggle, forgetting this to be true, right? And we need these great prophets, prophets, the Rumis, divine messengers, to remind us of this. And I also hope that you can translate that word God for yourself. It's a big, big, fraught word, one that I am committed to expanding and wrestling with and reconciling in my life. I know I'm in good company here. This is the great joy that is being a seeking Unitarian Universalist. We get to wrestle with theology, right? It's wonderful. What a gift. Come return to the root of the root of yourself, Rumi writes. And these past weeks, we've been working with this, right? The deep well within, the quiet, still place inside that we might touch fingers with when we rest. And I've been holding to these themes because I believe them to not only be foundational to the spiritual life and certainly themes that we need consistent reminding of, right? I do, foundational to the spiritual life, but also foundational to everything we do here in church and everything, everything we do out in the world. Justice work. And what do I mean by justice work? It's a word we Unitarian Universalists use a lot. We are a people of justice. Our faith is a faith of justice. What does this mean? What does this mean? Civil rights activist Ruby Sales, if you don't know her, I hope you will take some time to look her up and get to know her. She's another one of those great prophets in our midst. Ruby Sales centers a key question in her understanding of justice work, one that she claims is rarely asked in our culture. Oh, yes, it is countercultural. Where does it hurt? Where does it hurt? This question came about at a time in her public life of activism where she had pointedly separated out her rocky religious upbringing from her justice work. In an interview she did back in 2016, she said that this distinction between faith and justice was actually working out just fine for her until she encountered a woman named Shelley. Shelley was lost in the trenches of addiction and living a life of crime. And Sales recalls in this moment of meeting her that the only question, the only question she could think of to ask was, where does it, where does it hurt? Where does it hurt, Shelley? And by asking that question that day, Sales said, she cracked something open in this person, in their story, in the telling of their story, and in herself. A well of pain that needed only asking after and receiving. And it was this blessed, unexpected encounter that helped Ruby Sales to see that she needed a larger way to do the work of justice, a way that might seek to get to the heart of the matter, the heart of the matter. She writes, quote, those human moments, the where does it hurt moments with my fellows 
made me want to develop in a very intentional way an inner life that had to do with how I lived in the world. So what sales knows and lives well is that justice work, right relationship, dismantling systems of oppression, reckoning with the atrocities of the past and present, the cruelties, cruelties, finding our way to one another, that this is spiritual work. For to be able to ask another human being in earnest, where does it hurt? Tell me your pain. And to listen, let it permeate into those deep places within so that we might find ourselves bound up in one another. This is spiritual work. And I'll tell you why, because it requires grace. It requires compassion. It requires open heartedness, heart brokenness, stretched in convenient love. It requires a willingness to be transformed by the answer, faith. And it's scary and it's painful. Deep relationality can be, yes. Because a willingness to be transformed means a willingness to let go of and maybe even grieve parts of our own stories and identities and fixed understandings of this world and people and wade out into the unknown with open hands. And it's also so wonderful. Deep connection with our fellows is always wonderful. And for my part, I have not been able to ask this question, where does it hurt, authentically, and be able to deeply listen to what comes when I don't dedicate myself to the practice of asking it of myself. It's very difficult to sit with another's pain, I would say near impossible, when we do not know how to sit with our own. And most of us are unpracticed at this kind of self-reflective vulnerability. We were not taught this. Some of you might be grimacing at the thought. I get it. And not unlike last week when I talked about the balance needed between work in the world and rest, so too do we need balance when we consider the work of liberation in our world and in the deepest parts of ourselves. And honestly, right now, our Unitarian Universalist faith is calling us towards this balance. So many of our prophetic UU leaders are worried worried that if we, and they are mainly talking to us white folk, okay, that if we as you use do not engage in deep, hefty spiritual work and grounding and interior reckoning, we are risking the very thing that all of us long for. And I have no doubt that all of us are longing for this, which is the capacity to listen to and love and hold with care the pains and stories of those who hold historically marginalized identities. We want this. We all want this. The latest Commission on Institutional Change, maybe some of you have heard about this, that has been offered by our larger UU association is called Widening the Circle of Concern. And it tells us, this is a quote, it tells us that justice-seeking practices of Unitarian Universalists are often not grounded on spiritual or ritual principles. Instead, justice-seeking takes the place of ritual and religious life. It takes the place of. They go on to say that we need faith tenants that can hold us in this work so that we might see our interior healing as irrevocably linked to communal healing. 
interior healing as irrevocably linked to communal healing. I hope you hear that. You can access Widening the Circle of Concern on the UUA's website for free in like a PDF form. It's massive though. You can also order it in book form. No matter which way you get to it, I hope that you will look for it and read it. Many of you are already doing this, and I hope we as a congregation can find more intentional ways of moving through this incredible moment and call to faith, for it is a call to faith. And this call to faith, this brave new vision of spiritually hefty justice work gets us to the heart of the matter. It makes possible an intentional living in the world where we can ask, how might by my heart open to your pain? Tell me your story. Where does it hurt? And it's not just about me. It's about us learning how to face one another. And let me tell you, my spiritual companions and friends, I do this kind of deeply relational, spiritually grounded justice work so imperfectly. I get it so wrong. I've unintentionally left people out. I've been defensive. I've made it all about me. Yes. Yes. And I tell you, I have found such beauty and grace in learning how to ask, how did I hurt you? And I'm sorry. And I have found that the contemplative life, which is how I intentionally practice prayer and meditation and a seeking of a relationship with what I call God or goddess sometimes, it's changing all the time. It has taught me how to do this. And it teaches it, te it teaches me how to do this again and again. It's revealed that with all my imperfections and mistakes and utterly human fallibilities, we all have them, that at the root of the root of myself, I am, as Rumi writes, born from a ray of divine majesty and have the blessings of a good star. I need that reminder. And my friends, so are you. Blessings of a good star. And I believe that when we find our way home to this knowing in ourselves, we find our way home to this knowing in one another. Even those, even those that are hard to love. For our faith calls us to that kind of big love. And I tell you, don't worry, we are in this together. And it's complex. So as for Ruby Sales' beautiful heart of the matter question, the first stop might be to ask it of yourself. Where does it hurt? And practice listening with yourself. And this is not, please hear this, this is not about perpetuating, it's all about meanness, right? No, please don't misunderstand me. This is about interior healing as a key component of collective liberation. So that is just a beginning. It's a beginning. And it's a practice to return to on your own. It really is not just about me, I. It is about us. And I hope that we can be brave in this and talk to each other about this and ask one another how you find your way to the root of the root of yourself. May it be so, I say, and amen.